So, we're going to do some planting here, um, which is the next step really. So, I've got some beetroot plants there that I've grown from seed and then pricked out, as we've seen on the other videos, and uh, put them into these, into these module trays. It's a bit of an old one that's breaking a bit, but it's worth reusing, reusing the plastic. Um, so obviously it's not good to keep using it once and damaging it and throwing it away so use it for as long as I can. I've cleared some um, some broccoli there, some purple spine broccoli that was in here um, before and, and I've harvested some there, that, the last bit that will have to tea. Um, so in here I'm going to have a couple of courgettes over the summer and some outdoor tomatoes, some romas are going to go down here. Uh, but around the side I reckon I can get some beetroot and I've got some spinach here going and some lettuce that will probably be cleared by the time that the courgettes and tomatoes go in which will be the beginning of June and they'll take up a, um, a lot more space uh, but these will go to flower anyway by that point and they'll want to come out. I've got some remaining beetroot that overwintered there that didn't do very well but they've sort of sprung back into life again so I don't want to take them out just yet. That one, that's one called Bull's Blood, uh, which is very dark leaved. Uh, this one's called uh, Crapodine, 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 however you want to pronounce it. It's, it's a French, it's an old French type, um, which is the first time I've grown it. So I've got my string line here, so I'm going to plant them down this line. I've got uh, my tool tools, this is my favourite planting tool at the minute, which is this old trowel that were all rusty that somebody gave me and I've cleaned it up and sort of oiled the handle that's nice it feels nice in the end but I also bought this a few years ago which is a, a Japanese tool called the Hori Hori which is H-O-R-I twice um, and I bought it because I thought it looks pretty cool but actually it's really useful you can do weeding you can do leveling you can do planting with it planting in hard ground it's dry it's also got some measurements on the back so you can do depths and measure things out. It's been brilliant, honestly, it's not a novelty. So, what I want to do is, it's very dry soil, so I'm going to give them a good water afterwards. Is We'll start here and we're going to go along the line. So I'm going to make my hole along the line with the trout. Hopefully, judging by it, to the same depth as what these are in the, the module. I don't want to sink them any deeper just because I don't want the crown to rot. But what you want to do then is tip it over gently and give it a squeeze at the back. Hopefully it should drop out like that. If it's a well grown come it should just drop out nicely. You can see the roots there and it's nice and well watered before it's gone in. So we're just going to lower it in alongside gently, put some soil around it. Now beetroot can go quite close together. The um, more space you give it the bigger ones you get but I'm not too worried about getting huge ones I just want to get some beetroot. So I'm going to do about the width, the length of that, not the width, the length of that trial blade. But you can measure it out properly if you want to. Some um, stuff online that you can look it up, it tells you on bucket seed packet how far to plant it far, uh, all sorts of different stuff. So we'll do it again, try and squeeze one out, gently squeeze it at the back, because I want to preserve this also, I don't want to damage the tree, so I want to keep reusing it. Oh. I like to do it on the line because it looks neat, it doesn't make them grow any better, but it looks neat. And I like the neatness. But if you were working on a big allotment or a big space, you'd have them in a string line, a nice straight line, with a good gap in between, and then you can walk up and down between them to check on them, to water them, to harvest without damaging them. But from here, because I've made these small beds that are only about a meter wide, I can reach from either side into the middle, which means I don't have to walk on it. So I'll just carry along along that line. One more, I'll show you the hurry hurry. I'll squeeze this one out. If you can see in there, there's two in there. Now that's fine with beetroot and some things you can you can grow them together 
it and again you just get smaller ones and you just harvest one when it's ready and then the other one swells up so we'll do a similar measurement to that one the sun's just coming round so we get some some shade so you can probably hear the wind so the shade's just casting across here if I left this another half an hour you probably won't be able to see much because it'll be in the shade nice and easy put some soil around it and I'm going to give them a good water with a watering can with a rose on the top not a um, so it's nice and gentle it doesn't damage them it doesn't wash them away it doesn't wash away the, the soil and I'm going to water them in on a night or on a morning every day for a good week to make sure they're right and any dry spells like we're having now I'm going to keep watering 